Go ahead and laugh, you guys. The final, final little passes of business. A dead meat. Welcome back to Not Dead Me, where we tell up the victims in all the movies James A. Janice hasn't covered yet. I'm Vic, and today we're looking at The Stuff, released in 1985. The script was written, and the movie was directed by Larry Cohen, who we've already seen on The Kill Count and Maniac Cop. The plot follows a private investigator trying to steal the recipe to a popular ice cream dessert. And along the way, he will discover the horrors of the stuff. <laughs> With so many people getting addicted to the stuff, will their addiction get them killed? Let's find out and count them. The movie begins with some man at like a mining company finding some white stuff oozing from the ground. What the hell is this? And like any nonsensical person, he decides to taste it, where he remarks that It's real good. With the opening scene established, we cut to this little boy struggling to go to sleep. His name is Jason, no not that one, and when he closes the window he gives us a title card. Jason then heads downstairs to get a snack. And when he opens the refrigerator, instead of seeing his mom's head, he sees the ice cream moving around. Jason's father catches him making a bunch of racket, and so he sends his son back up to bed. And before Jason's dad goes to bed, he makes sure to get himself a bite of the stuff. You're gonna feel that in the morning, Jason's dad. Which is literally his name in the credits. So that's what I'm gonna call him. The next day on a yacht, some men discuss how the stuff is getting so popular it could put them out of business. One of these fancy men says they hired a private investigator to help try and steal the recipe of the stuff. That's when we meet Mo Rutherford, a former FBI agent. And why is his name Mo? Well, because... Every time people give me money, I always want Mo. And after Mo has paid his money, he heads off. The next day, Mo heads to a building where they're filming a commercial for the stuff. Yeah. Okay. You to feed each Here he meets Nicole, a commercial director, played by Andrea Markovici. I forgot to mention that Mo is played by Michael Moriarty of Law and Order. After some business discussing, Mo convinces Nicole to help him. We check back in on Jason when we get this pretty funny scene as he goes into a supermarket and begins knocking all the stuff off the shelves he can find. Hey, give me that! Hey, give me that! What do you think you got? Tripping over, slinging ice cream all over the place, and making minimum wage workers hate their lives. Shit. We check back in on Mo as he's gone to see a member of the Food and Drug Administration, Mr. Vickers. We also see that Mr. Vickers has a good boy named Ben. Mo begins asking Mr. Vickers a few questions. Like, when was the stuff tested, and how long has Mr. Vickers been on the Food and Drug Administration? But then he asks him a question that he can't really answer. Hey, what's in the stuff? I mean, what's it made out of? How's it made? What was your name again? Mr. Vickers avoids the question and begins talking about how well the stuff tastes, even remarking that he feeds it to his dog, Ben. As Mr. Vickers heads upstairs to get some papers, Mo discovers that Mr. Vickers may be a little addicted to the stuff. Mr. Vickers returns with the papers, and after Mo retrieves them, he heads off again. Not long after Mo leaves, Ben starts freaking out and attacking Mr. Vickers. He might just have to go to the bathroom, dude. My dogs start freaking out when they need to go to the bath. Nope, that dog has ice cream coming out of its mouth. And with that, Mr. Vickers is the first kill on the count, probably mauled off screen by Ben. As Mo uses those documents to find other FDA members, he stops at a gas station. Where the gas station attendant really wants Mo to use his new bathroom. Well, don't you want to wash your hands or something? I put in a new towel. There's nice clean restrooms out there if you want to. The attendant also tells Mo that suspiciously everybody else in the town has left. A mysterious car pulls up and as Mo approaches it, the gas station attendant runs away like his son just subscribed to Nikocado Avocado. And after Mo finds the car vacant, a man jumps up from behind and begins attacking Mo. After Mo wins the fight, he puts the man on the ground and remarks that he is Chocolate Chip Charlie. Well, I sure as hell ain't the Kentucky Colonel. Get off of me. Charlie is played by Garrett Morris, who also played Ant Man in an SNL sketch. That's several times. I, it's Ant Man. A N T M A N. Charlie explains to Mo that the, some guys that worked for the stuff came in and paid his nephews and his brother to kick him out of his own company. Mo and Charlie head into a post office where they find out everybody in the town has left to go to Midland, Georgia, Midland, Georgia, Midland, Georgia. A whole lot of folks have relocated to Midland, Georgia, man. And after Mo spies that the man has been eating a lot of the stuff, the man says that he's getting a little bit of indigestion and he heads into the back. 
Charlie and Mo begin discussing what should be done about the strange man when they hear some weird noises coming from the back. Guys, I'm sure he's just having some indigestion. It's okay, just give him a minute. Okay, what is with people and animals wanting to throw up sentient white slime? After Charlie karate chops his way inside the door, they find the dead carcass of the post office guy, which I'm counting as a kill. Now let me explain how I'm going to kind of kill count these stuffies as they get called later in the movie. If the body that the stuff is inhabiting in is destroyed, it's basically dead. And if the stuff leaves a body and it just kind of leaves like a carcass behind, it's technically dead. It's just a dead body laying there, even if it does go back in later. Got that? Okay, let's continue. Mo and Charlie leave the building and as they're walking around outside, a bunch of men start chasing them. As Mo and Charlie run away, Charlie manages to knock out, as far as I can tell, the gas station guy, but Mo secures a kill, punching off the face of one of the stuffies. Eventually, our characters get into a boat and escape and make their way to a diner, where Mo decides that they need to... You and I are gonna have to split up. Mo tells Charlie that he needs him to go find a certain FBI agent that can help them out. And with that, the two men split up. We also see the waitress has a little bit of a food addiction. She is a fat ass. Back in the city, Mo has gone to see Mr. Fletcher, basically the distributor of the stuff. And Mr. Fletcher basically says, Hey, I give you lots of money and you stop investigating my company, okay? But Mo tells him he's not good at giving promises. Back at Jason's house, we see his family has thrown away all their food, including the eggs. No! In the living room, we see that his entire family is currently snacking on the stuff. And when Jason's dad tries to offer him some, Jason says, There is something alive in there. To which his dad replies, We yeah. eat plenty of things that are still alive that are good for us. They're good for us, Jason. They kill the bad things inside us. Pretty spooky. But Jason's about that hashtag vegan life, and so when he tries to run away from his house, his brother drags him back inside. Jason's parents hand him a cup of the stuff and send him upstairs and tell him not to come down until he's finished every last bite. Instead of, you know, like, watching him eat it, which would make more sense. Jason goes into the bathroom and begins pouring the stuff down the toilet bowl to where the stuff tries to reverse crawl out. But like many a graves for goldfish, Jason flushes it down. And to fool his family, he refills the cup with shaving cream. Jason heads back downstairs and tells his family that he loves the stuff now as his brother stands there with 3D glasses that don't even sit on his face. How were they staying on his face? But Jason's trick ultimately fails when he gets sick from eating the shaving cream and he runs out to throw up. Jason runs away, and as his family pursues him, Mo eventually catches up and saves Jason. Mo and Jason eventually arrive at an airport where Nicole is waiting, so I guess they're like his parents now? Our characters eventually land in Midland, Georgia. Nicole and Mo get off the plane so they can go investigate slash tour a factory for the stuff, and they leave Jason to nap. But looks like Jason won't be getting that doctor's recommended eight hours because we see the captain of the plane getting suffocated by a piece of the stuff. And we see his asphyxiated body in the front of the cabin as the stuff pours in. Jason escapes through a suitcase loader or something and bolts into the woods. Which ultimately leads him to one of Fletcher's abandoned mines. What are the odds of that? And when some stuff workers almost find him, he decides to hide in a tanker truck. Which is shortly closed. We check back in on Mo and Nicole where we see that their tour is just finished and they had to check into a motel. As our characters try to sleep, the stuff begins leaking from their pillows, attacking Mo by latching onto his face. As Nicole tries to save Mo, she finally discovers the weakness of the stuff, fire, as she lights Mo's face on fire to get it off of him. But she eventually succeeds, and then this random dude in plaid attacks them, but he just gets killed by the stuff. Don't even know what you were trying to do there, dude. <laughs> Mo and Nicole hop in his truck and they begin speeding off and they start following those tanker trucks we saw earlier. The workers of those tanker trucks eventually arrive at a pit of white slimy goo. They start siphoning it out of the ground as we learn this is where the stuff really comes from. Mo and Nicole also eventually arrive and they begin spying on the workers. Mo pulls out one of those worker uniforms I guess he stole and he's going to use it to get down there undetected. As Mo heads down the cliff, he sets up some small bombs all around the edge of the cliff. And if you've been wondering where Jason's been this whole time, it turns out he's in one of these tanker trucks that begins filling up with the stuff. As the stuff inches closer and closer to Jason, he begins crying out for help, which Mo overhears from outside the truck. And to save Jason, Mo takes the truck and drives away, detonating those bombs which covers the pit of the stuff with dirt and debris. 
As Mo gets away in the tanker truck, Nicole tries to get back in Mo's truck where she gets attacked by the post office guy. But when Nicole gets him to the ground, Mo pulls up and runs him over with the truck and his head just combusts. Oh my gosh. And if I follow my rules from earlier, this guy's technically dead again. After Mo rescues Jason from the tanker truck, they then head off to meet an old friend of Mo's. Friend might be a strong word. Here we meet Colonel Spears, played by Paul Sorvino, who I guess also played Schick in the Hey Arnold movie? The mission is completely hopeless. It still is. Though I'm less inclined to entertain you after you broke into my building for the second time. Mo catches Spears up on the issue of the stuff and how it's going to spread through America like wildfire. And with his knowledge of his nation being in trouble, Spears elects to help them. At the stuff factory, this trucker guy returns the tanker truck that Mo stole earlier. But then the worker shoots the man dead and Spears and his army jump out and reveal this is a trap and they gun the stuffy down. But as Spears and his army raid the factory, all of the workers just seem to be running away and disappearing. When they make their way inside the factory, it seems deserted as well until they find a room full of a bunch of dead workers. And from these pile of dead workers, I counted about 15 kills. Some of them men, some women, and some I just couldn't tell. Not wanting Jason to see this disturbing sight, Nicole takes him out. But where did all the stuff go? Oop, there it is. Nicole and Jason desperately try to get away as the massive blob of the stuff continues to go towards them. They barely escape with their lives, unlike these two soldiers when the stuff breaks out of the building, smothering them completely. After seeing the horrors of what the stuff can do, Colonel Spears tells our characters that he owns a radio station in Atlanta where they can tell the public about the dangers of the stuff. When they get to the radio station, we learn that Colonel Spears hates public advertising. The stuff, the taste that makes you hungry for more. Get that shit off my station! As Mo and Nicole prepare for the warning broadcast, my favorite character re-enters the movie. Just get, get out of there! That's all, he's alright. Charlie, how are you? How you doing? David, my man, how you doing? Hey, David. Charlie decides that he'll help them on their broadcast to help warn the people. And so he and Nicole head into the recording booth to get ready for the broadcast. But in the recording studio, Charlie starts acting a little bit strange. <laughs> Charlie is revealed to have been stuffified as he slowly mutates into a very disgusting way until the stuff completely exits his body. And when the stuff corners Jason in the room, Mo has to save Nicole and Jason by using a frayed wire to electrocute it. And with our characters safe, they begin their warning broadcast. My fellow Americans, tonight America is in grave danger. We are under alien attack by a substance which represents itself as a popular dessert known as the stuff. And with the message out, the stuff business falls into ruins with billboards burned and hundreds of millions of cans of stuff are burned. They even blow up a whole dang store. <laughs> Mo goes to speak with Fletcher again, where Fletcher reveals that he and the man that hired Mo are now working together to make a new ice cream they like to call the taste. An improved version of the stuff, which just makes people super addicted to it. But these greedy men will never see this idea come to fruition because Jason and Mo force these two men to eat a bunch of containers of the stuff. But since we never see them explicitly die, I'm going to leave them off the count. The movie ends with some smugglers purchasing some of the stuff to snack on because their addiction is too strong. Because enough is never enough. How many people would eat so much of the stuff that they would get stuffed by it? Let's find out and get to the numbers. But first, I found this really good new ice cream. I think it's really good. You should try it. It's not addicting. It's totally not made of the stuff. It's it's not addicting. Just just try it. It's it's not addicting. It's 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 not addicting. I counted 26 deaths in the stuff. 15 men, two women, and nine. I just couldn't tell what gender they were. With a runtime of 84 minutes, that gives us a kill on average every 3.23 minutes. Golden Chainsaw for Cool Skill definitely goes to Charlie. This kill is nasty and comes out of nowhere, and I was honestly blown away when I first watched it. Dole Machete goes to the truck driver guy. Even though there were some off-screen kills, you can imagine something gruesome. This dude just got some bullet makeup that doesn't really look that good. And that's it. The stuff was released in 1985, and I actually think it was a really good movie, except the end was a little rushed. Next kill count, we're looking at Maniac Cop 2, but I actually have a surprise for y'all coming up. But until then, I'm Vic. This has been Not Dead Meat. Thanks for watching. Thank you.